It's your open source advocate, and I'm back with another video. And I wanted to bring up a new terminal emulator, and it's really not new, it's just got a name change. It's been around for a while, but it's got some pretty great stuff in it, and I really like it. So, I wanted to kind of show you guys what it is and how to install it. It is an installable application. This is not a Dockerized type thing, it's not a browser application. I do think it uses Electron in the background, so just be aware of that. But overall, it runs really great. I've really been enjoying using it. I want to show you a few things that I've found about it. Um, so I'm going to install it on this system today for you guys, and then we'll kind of jump into the user interface. It shouldn't take too long. This should be a fairly quick video. Now, Tabby got brought up on the live stream the other day, and I had seen it in the past, but I'd seen it under a different name and just didn't realize it. So I went to went to look it up, and I realized, oh, okay, this is something I've seen before. So uh, Abricorp had mentioned that he was using Terminus uh, for a lot of the stuff that they do at his work and, and with his group. Um, and some people suggested Tabby. Um, the other one that I found is a uh, is another one that uh, called Teleport. And if you've ever watched the Digital Life channel, um, Christian, I believe is his name, talks about Teleport quite a bit, and he uses that quite a bit. So it's pretty cool too. It's open source, and I may do a video on it later on. But he's got a great one out there. If you want to go watch it now, if you don't want to wait for me to make one later, uh, but Tabby is pretty great. So when you kind of look at this thing, it looks fairly clean, but it runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux as far as I can tell. I also believe they have an ARM version, so that's pretty great. But they've got downloads, so you can go to the latest release. Um, you know, really there's Ubuntu-based, RPM-based, so you can see there's just a lot of stuff going on with this one. But if we just jump over to the releases page, you can see it's on Alpha 168, and it was released uh, eight days ago, basically. So there's active development going on, which is also terrific. If you scroll down here, you'll see that uh, there's a Mac YAML file and then there's deb file. So for the system I'm using, that's going to be what I want. But there's a Pac-Man file if you're using Arch and Pac-Man based systems. Great. RPM if you're using an RPM based system. You've also got a tar.gz file that you can go and unpack and, and kind of probably build yourself. You've got the package file, which this is going to be your Mac installer. Basically, a PKG file is generally Mac. You've got the zip file, you've got another package file for 64-bit, so again, probably this is what you want if you're using a modern Macintosh. Again, you've got 64-bit uh, zip, and then you've got EXEs for Windows as well. So you've got a lot of options, and it really crosses a lot of platforms, so you've, you've probably got the ARM platforms in here as well. So kind of check that out. It's got a lot of, lot of different options, but really what we want is the deb release in my case, so I'm just going to click on this. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post all of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion, and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that. But if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting notifications through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you, jump over and become a supporter on Patreon, patreon.com. I've got the links in the description and the show notes. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. And it's going to ask me if I want to download it, so I'm going to say, yep, I do. And it's going to save to my files. And on Linux, uh, for me, Deb, I just do from the command line. So I'm going to use my current command line tool, which is just the built-in command line tool. And I'm going to cd into my downloads folder. And I'm going to do sudo dpackage, so dpkg-i. And then TAB, and just and I'm going to tab. So I'm going to type tab, and then I'm going to hit tab. And it's going to tab out to the to tabby uh, .deb here. I'm going to put in my super user password, and I'm going to hit enter. Now this is going to go out, and it's going to try to find the dependencies. But if it can't, it's going to give me a couple little errors in the terminal, possibly. So yeah, you can see here it's got a dpackage error saying, hey, it needs this thing, and it didn't find it, and it didn't. So it doesn't just auto install it. But the easy fix for this on Linux is to do sudo apt oops, if I spell it right, install hyphen F, like force. And then it's going to go out and it's going to get those things going to ask you, hey, are you sure you want to install these things? Here's how much space it's going to take. And it's going to be about 631 kilobytes. That's fine. And we're going to let that go out and grab those things real quick. And then it's probably actually already done and ready, but I'm going to go ahead and run the dpackage i uh, command again and let it kind of run through that process and make sure it completes without any errors. And it's done. So so this was very quick, very straightforward, very nothing special about it. Um, and now we should be able to start up Tabby. So I'm going to close this terminal emulator. And I'm going to hit this and I'm going to type in Tabby. And there it is right there in the list. So you can see right there what it looks like. And we'll let that guy open up. It opened up on the wrong screen. Let me move it over here for you guys. So it opens up in a fairly normal terminal sized window, I guess is the best way to put it. And you get this nice little installer screen. Um, 
and you've got a couple of options that are turned on automatically. So feel free to leave these on or off if you if you don't want to leave them on, you know, turn them off. That's fine. Then you can click on the little button here. And basically, this is what I see every time I start Tabby. It's a little loading screen, which is kind of nice because it tells you this loading things up in the background. And you can tell that this is a little bit not keeping with the theme of the system exactly, but it, it looks really nice. It's really clean. I'm going to make this bigger uh, for a couple of reasons. So right now, this font's pretty small. So I'm going to go up here to the settings first thing. I think settings are super important on any application you install. And, and for me, settings are always important because I don't see well, so small font is not my favorite. So I'm going to go down here to the appearance section and right here you can see that I can adjust the font already. So it's got, you can change the font right here, but right here I can adjust the font size and you can see it defaults to what it says is 14, but I, I promise you this looks really small to be 14 point font. So I'm going to just increase this quite a bit. Um, so not just for me, but for you guys as well. So this is what it should look like if it takes our settings. Um, and then you've got a few other settings down here that you can check out. So you can say from the theme or you can say from something else, uh, you know, from a color scheme. So basically, how do you want it to, to act and look? How do you want the cursor to look? So right now it's set on a block cursor, but you can set it for a thin line that's a vertical or a thin line that's horizontal if you want to. And, and a few other little, you know, tweaks, I guess, is the best way to put it. Oh, and then you've got an option for custom CSS right here, which is really great. Um, I think that's pretty cool that you can kind of theme this thing the way that you want to. Now, if we go back up to the application part, you can see it says check for updates. So we can go out and it'll check. Now, whether it'll find updates or not is always going to be kind of depending on when updates have been released. Of course, we're on the latest one. We just saw that and we downloaded it. So there's no updates to, to really pull down right now. Then you've got these application settings that we saw kind of at the beginning. We started it up. So if you said, oh, man, I didn't mean to leave those on, you can come here still and turn them off. Don't worry. Now, as this is running an Electron, you can open the dev tools. So if you're seeing weird errors or issues, and again, it opened on this other screen, you can open the dev tools. You can kind of check the console. You can get logs, things like that. So if you're trying to provide some feedback to the guys working on Tabby, um, then definitely, you know, get out there and give them feedback. Now, so I did want to mention that Tabby used to be known as Terminus. And I think uh, Terminus is, is what, it, what it was. Now it's called Tabby. So formerly Terminus. It's highly configurable terminal emulator. So again, really when you look at any of these things, even this one here, um, you know, I call it the terminal. I'm going to open up the terminal. It's really not. It's, it's, it's the terminal emulator that's built into the system. And in this case, I use Bash uh, Shell, but it's a terminal emulator. It's not an actual terminal. A terminal would be I sit down at my system and this is all I can get. I don't get a graphical user interface. It's really a terminal that's accessing another system remotely. Um, and that's what a terminal is. That's why this is a terminal emulator. It emulates what a terminal used to look like. And it's the same thing for Tabby. So when we've got Tabby open down here, uh, this is this is a terminal emulator, but it's just got a lot of nice settings and things that have been built in. And it's running kind of with an HTML background and some JavaScript that let it do all the terminal things that it needs to do. Uh, it just gives you a lot of really nice features for doing the settings that, that are a little bit easier than, than what you have in other terminal emulators. Um, there's some really great terminal emulators out there. Do not misunderstand at all that, that this may not be the one for you, but it may be. So I wanted to show it to you guys. So here you can set up profiles. So this is kind of an important page and, and we'll come back to this one in just a minute. But you can see here that you've got kind of bash, sh, tsh, zsh, you know, different serial kind of profiles. So all these things that are kind of built into it that you can do out of the box. But also for ssh, you might want to create some profiles. So we'll come back and do that here in just a minute. We'll finish with the rest of the settings first. So here we've got terminal, actually, you're going to see here kind of what you have as far as um, kind of the front end look, I guess, is the best way to put it. It's going to use Xterm instead of Xterm GL. So Xterm is fine. Uh, it works great for me. The keyboard. So if you want to use Alt as the meta key, you can, but you don't have to. Um, and I think there's some meta key stuff that you can do with like control space inside of Tabby, which is pretty great. So you can set up what the right click does with the mouse. And in my case, I like the context menu when I right click. I think it's pretty great. Um, I use kind of the middle click for paste. So I don't want to set that to right click, honestly. But if you're used to the way that uh, putty works in Windows, then you'll know that paste is the right click. So you might want to set that because that may be what you're used to. And then here you can see paste on middle click. So again, if you're used to that, which is the mouse wheel, basically you click it and it'll paste stuff. Then right here, you can turn that on or turn that off. So if you hate it, turn it off. If you like it, turn it on. So then you've got some setup for your word separators and then you've got settings for your clipboard and, and a few various settings there. So it's worthwhile to go through these settings and tabby if you're going to start using it and make sure that it's set up the way that you want. 
Now, they've got a lot of really great um, themes as well. Now, what gets me is these themes look like this is going to be really dark, but when you pick it, it, it actually isn't that dark. So I, I kind of don't, I, I don't like it um, when I when I see like, hey, this is what it's going to look like, but then it doesn't actually look like that. Um, at least that's been my experience so far. So we may come try some of these here in a little bit, but for now, we'll just leave it on the default theme. You know, I, I like a dark theme and I like some good color inside of a theme. Um, so you'd, you'd have to kind of go and just try all these out. And I mean, look at this. This is just tons and tons and tons of themes. So you can kind of go pick a theme that you really like and it looks like something you would you would kind of enjoy uh, for sure. So like this one here looks really great. We'll, we'll click it and we'll see what it looks like here in a minute. So I've, I've selected my theme. Uh, we can go on down and then there's this, this uh, config sync. So you can set up syncing for your config. If you want to have multiple machines using Tabby and you want the same config on all of them, you can set that up here. Um, hotkeys is really super useful and important and you can set your hotkeys but you can also read about what the hotkeys are already and there's some great stuff that you can do with some of the hotkeys and I'll just show you a couple of things but it's definitely worth going through this and understanding what these are and then setting any hotkeys you want to use for yourself. The other thing is plugins. They have some really great third-party plugins. It already uses a bunch of plugins but um, if you go click on installed you can kind of see the plugins that it's already using out of the box. But there's some good plugins here that look pretty interesting. So like clicking on IPs and things like that could be useful. I know that I set this up on my first machine and this one was creating an error. I may set it up just to see if it does it here. And if it does, I'll show you something that's really great about this actually. So um, we'll go ahead and just click on this and we'll go ahead and click on get. And we'll let it go download that thing and install it. Now they have a Docker uh, thing here as well. So we'll just go ahead and do get. And so there's a few different ones here. So there, we, we've got a couple of plugins that we've now installed that are third party. As we move down, then you can see SSH. And of course you wanna turn on SSH and you wanna kinda of see what's going on there. If you wanna use a key pass vault, you can do that. Um, it's not required, but it's not configured either. So you may need to set that up if you want to, but it'll ask you the first time you try to do it to do that as well. Here you can kinda of set how the, how the window looks, the default of it, how everything functions. Um, again, some nice settings to kind of go through and make sure they fit what you want. Out of the box, it kind of fits what I use already, so nothing for me to change there really. But if you did want to set some opacities and things like that, you can do that. And then finally, here's the raw config file. So if you want to go through and change anything about the raw config, you can do that here and you're pretty much set. So we're set there. So I'm just going to close this and you'll see that it doesn't close the entire tabby system. It just closes that settings area. So first thing, if we just say new terminal... You're going to see that you're going to get your bash prompt and you see it's already got my settings here for how big this the font is which is great so i can do ls i can do clear it, it works just like any other terminal but you notice this background is not as dark as i asked for but i haven't exited and come back in so i'm going to close this and i'm going to come back into it And there it comes and it remembers the size that I set last, which I really like. Most terminal emulators don't do that. Yeah, so here's that error I was talking about. So it opens up and it says, hey, you know, we couldn't load the URLs for one of your third party applications. So we're just going to disable third party applications for now. And you can say, OK, close. And the thing I like about that is it doesn't stop me from getting to my terminal and using it. It just says, hey, you know what? We saw that there was a problem. So we're just going to disable those for now. And then you can go fix them and then kind of do what you need to do. So I'm going to go back in here real quick. And I'm going to go to the plugins and I'm going to go to my installed plugins and I'm going to remove that uh, clickable IPs plugin because I'm pretty sure that's the one that's creating the problem. So we're just going to click on uninstall. That's it. And we're going to close this and we'll, you know, we'll even close this one. And then we're just going to close out of tabby and we're just going to one more time, open it back up here. And you can see how it loads, which is pretty nice. It kind of tells you what's going on now. No error. That's great. And right here, it kind of comes up again. It says, hey, what do you want to do? So right here, you can see profiles and connections. Well, out of the gate, I don't really have any profiles and connections set up, but I do have kind of my main bin bash terminal, which it just gives me if I click on the top button as well. But again, if we go back into settings and we go down to the profiles and connections, now I can add a new profile and I want to do one for SSH. So I'm going to set this to go to my media server that I use for a lot of my different uh, demos for you guys. I'm going to set the, the host or actually you can just call this, this is the host name actually. So I'll just call this media server. And then over here we'll put in the IP address. 
and it's on port 22 so if you need to change that don't forget to change that port and then the username is not root um, I don't log in as root I log in as myself and then right here so I can I can upload keys if I want to I can add an SSH key if I have that um, or I can actually just put in the password so if I click here you'll see it opens up for the password so I'm gonna type that in and then I'm gonna hit OK and then I'm gonna hit save right there so now if I go back out of this so I'm gonna click on this little icon here and I want to go to my SSH session which is right here at the top so I'm just gonna click on that and you see it logs me right in and it tries to connect and there we are I am in my SSH session and everything looks good so right here we can see I'm on Brian Delmain right here you can see I'm on server new which is great that's that's pretty awesome to me that I didn't have to go type in a bunch of stuff and and SSH in I just picked it and it SSH is for me which is amazing and it's gonna save me a lot of time because I SSH all over my network to do all kinds of things whether I'm making videos or whether I'm just doing things to kinda of keep things maintained super useful so this right here is gonna save me a lot of time right out of the box very quickly very very nicely now I want to go back into the settings and kind of show you what all you can get out of that whenever you look at those profiles and connections. So when we say add a new one, there's not just SSH. So there's a Docker container shell. So if I have a container that I know I'm going to be jumping into that container quite a bit and they give you that Docker exec hyphen IT or Docker hyphen IT exec do this thing, you can set that up in here, which is pretty great, and save yourself some time, some typing and things like that and just kind of jump into it. So you've got raw socket connections. I don't know that I've ever done a raw socket connection, but there's an option if you have to do that. You've got serial connections, and then you've got Telnet connections. Now, I haven't done a lot of Telnet, but in the past, when I was kind of hacking around on an old, old, old Apple TV to do some stuff, I had to Telnet into it. And a few times when I've done some things where I'm putting DDWRT onto a, a Linksys router or something, I've had to Telnet into the router to do some stuff to make it all work or to unbrick it and things like that. So Telnet is pretty useful. Um, for certain things, but it's definitely not something where I'd need it set up all the time, I don't think, but it's, it's useful to have because you might be someone who does need it set up all the time. Then of course you've got your normal bash sessions and things like that, and all the other things that we kind of saw on that list, but what's great is once you set these up, it saves those things, but for me SSH is going to be kind of the big one. Um, now if you're a Windows user and you need SSH, this is a great way to have SSH set up and ready to go so you can SSH from Windows into other machines. Command prompt, I think you can put a plug in or something to use SSH. I don't remember if it's built in automatically already. Maybe it is now. It didn't used to be. You had to use PowerShell or something like that. Uh, maybe you like PowerShell. Maybe you don't. Just depends on who you are. But I think this is a really great way to do that and, and to kind of get that functionality out of a Windows system. So I'm just going to close out of that. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to create a new one right now. But I think this is really cool that I can do this and just SSH into this system. So I'm just going to close this and you'll see. I'm going to click here. I'm going to pick on my bash session right here, my SSH session, and it, again, it logs me right in, which is really great. Um, now, the hotkeys that we talked about. So there's different hotkey combinations. You can do a lot of stuff, but like your control shift, and you can see here that it tells you like, hey, here's where you're using this thing, and you can kind of see what's happening. And then if I did V, that would paste. Control shift C would copy. But the two that I like are control shift D, which splits your, your terminal horizontally, but look at that. Not only did it split it, but it SSH me right into that same system that I'm already on. I cannot tell you how often I have to open up a second terminal and SSH back into a system to check logs while something else is running in the first one. And to know that I could have something running up here and just hit that hotkey and it's going to log me in and SSH me in and I can start looking at those logs and stuff from here without having to do all that manual typing. Man, what a time saver. That is amazing. So that's Tabby. I think it's a really cool application. It is definitely an alpha, so be patient if you're going to use it. But I think if you start putting it to use and give us some feedback, that's just going to make this product much better in the long run. I'm really looking forward to see what else they come out with. I think it's pretty great. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and I'll talk to you next time.